March is here and I am very 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 excited about this month really because I am up to doing some really new cool content for Pixel Art Academy. I mean all the tutorials don't get me wrong I love doing them but there's just been so many months of tutorials and now we get into the next project next game you can make art for super excited and it's gonna happen on a Macintosh specifically this little Macintosh here is a little bit of a prototype of uh, I actually call it a pixel Tosh. let me explain in Pixel Art Academy you're making art for different systems like the Pico 8 so far but I also want to have the ZX Spectrum I also want to have the Macintosh however the Macintosh was actually quite high res for its time it had 512 pixels whereas my game <laughs> my game is worse than the first Macintosh my game is only 320 pixels like so what I decided is to just create a little bit of a mini version of the Macintosh so that's what we're working on this development sprint I've already created all of the tasks here they are and we're gonna try something crazy because on my aggressive scheduling where I wanted to do back-to-back two-week sprints I should have started this sprint already on the 26th but because there was a quite a busy week I decided I'm just gonna take care of all of the rest of the stuff like vlogs and first of the month accounting and stuff like that and I'll just start the sprint now but now I had this idea what if I just instead of a two-week sprint just have a one-week sprint it's gonna make me probably throw a lot of this away but maybe that's for the good thing we can always add this kind of fun stuff later if we have time so that's gonna be it just one week and we're gonna see how far we get and I'll see you right at the end slash start of the next development sprint. This has been a really short week it felt like but a really long weekend because I was able to get a lot of stuff done all the high priority tasks during the week and then but because I really wanted I really wanted all those nice little interactions I worked hard on the weekend so here we are in our pixel pad and yes of course there's the third new icon pixel tosh where you're gonna work on your next project that's what we've been working on and look at this tries to look like the old school Macintosh the first one 1984 model very old school have the menus this one doesn't work don't tell anyone you can select stuff you can double click and get different windows thus far I've been working on the weekend so that this actually looks like windows and you can yeah open stuff play with it a little bit file close and this kind of stuff all works it's fun and then this will then launch the pinball construction kit which we'll be working on during the next two weeks during the next sprint some couple of goodies for people that don't want this CRT emulation because yeah back then dithering for example this is a 50% dither in the background look at how it would look like now as a modern pixel art game that actually displays squares as squares I'm not sure if you if you can even see this uh, through YouTube's compression and all that stuff uh, but yeah this is how it would look like nowadays but because CRT screens have a scan line ray that is going across and turning on and off based on if there's a pixel or not you get these little lines so if we turn it back on again you can see instead of completely black and white dithering pattern you have these little dots I think we can zoom in see there are these little dots turn on and off so a little bit more black than if it was just pure squares so it creates it a little bit more darker and then we also have these little scan lines here as they go across very cool I'm happy that we can do that and another thing that you can maybe notice is that here from a smooth mouse here it starts being like 30 fps i don't know if you'll be able to see this because i'm not recording videos at 60 fps but look at this here slow cpu emulation we can turn it off if we want if we want the computer to also be smooth if somebody doesn't like this so see here everything just becomes quite more smooth whereas if i go in and simulate the slow cpu again then this will be much more laggy 
which is I really like it I like that it simulates how things used to be like and so yeah that's what we have so far and now for the next piece of the puzzle next two weeks we're gonna just clip on another sprint where we're gonna be working on pinball creation kit yes we're going to try to recreate a old school Macintosh game called pinball construction set probably not gonna do the whole thing but at least some parts of it so this was a pretty cool game where you were able to just create your own little pieces and then you get to play it look look at this punch the ball Book. so the physics wasn't the greatest back then but yeah it's a really cool game where you will be able to draw all of the play field yourself as pixel art and then using my line detection stuff it will create all of the physics all of the contours for you back in the days this was done by actually having like a polygon the whole play field was just made out of polygons because well that would make sense for old school physics engines uh, but yeah with my line detection and everything i can just let you draw everything you want and it'll automatically detect all the curves all the straight lines and feed it into a physics engine we're gonna be inspired by this and we're gonna call it pinball creation kit and that'll be our sprint now let's get into creating all of the tasks for it oh boy <laughs> uh yep i don't know how i'm gonna create all this stuff there is so much work to make a pinball game. In fact, if we count how many effort points when I assigned it, 47 high priority stuff. So I already kind of know because my effort points are around 16, 20 at best per week. Probably not able to do this in two weeks. So what we're gonna do is, I don't want things to go too much off of my optimistic schedule. Let's just push this on for one week further. Let's go all the way till the end of the month. So we have the whole of March to figure this out. It's not gonna be easy, but I really like this. So mm, we're gonna work hard and see how far we can get in by the end of march but i will be recording updates every monday on stream as well so uh yeah in a few seconds you'll see where i am in a week see you there things are going pretty well a whole week of working on pinball it's i'm so happy i'm so happy and here it is a little pinball creation kit and launch it and look at that i have this demo table set up i made a little plunger uh, there's the walls and everything is look I spent so much time getting this plunger working the physics is so janky I'm using bullet as the engine it took so long before I got able to get something that's remotely uh, stable and I have to run it at 1000 FPS which is so you'll see now like when I go all the way look it's super smooth al along the curves and yeah I'm only able to get that without it just randomly bouncing off even at 3 100 fps it's not good enough but 1000 fps works quite well what else can we do well you can switch to 3d view this is very experimental i'm mostly using it because i have this debug physics mode here so i can check how the yeah how the conversion happened uh, and yeah i'm using a 3d 3d uh, engine so you know the ball this gets turned into a ball well, the plunger is just a uh, is just a box for now so yeah that's where we currently are in our milestone let's check it out a lot of stuff has been done all, all the general architecture is now properly set up and i can focus on actual parts i think today i might actually go onto the flippers because they are fun even though it's medium priority it's fun and they work basically the same as the plunger uh, but I also need to do gobble holes so that's what we're gonna work on next and let's see where we can get in one more week all right I am very very happy how far we got so far look at this all of the high priority stuff is done so now it's all just about getting all of this fun stuff in but look at this this is how it looks like if we go into a little pixel tosh we have now our little pinball creation kit and there's our table that we can edit. So we go in, here's a little editor. This is the default table that you get. You can 
select things you can move them around here's a little ball and then we can go first of all we can go just in test mode now you can plunge this up flippers are working in test mode you just keep on getting new point new balls let's try again Choop. there we go now we put the ball in and then we also can go into so in this mode you could you know you could even edit stuff while uh, while in play so you could be later on adjusting different variables but we can also go into play mode and then here we actually get three three tries three balls and that was a very good start so I'm quite happy uh, with the whole simulation how it's going it took quite some time to perfect all the numbers and yeah coefficients and this kind of stuff and also to create a 3d version of this table because if i go here and if i go back to edit mode and i just keep adding new stuff it just recalculates how the three-dimensional field gets calculated where all of this simulation happens that's where we are so far with our little pinball game you can add many flippers if we want you can press them while reading it's a lot of it's a lot of fun stuff like that <sighs> i'm very excited i'm just gonna go back into i'm looking forward to this weekend i'll see you once more again at the end we'll see how far i was able to get i have worked super hard <laughs> this uh, i tried to get as much stuff in i'm so happy with all of the stuff that's in the game i've added a bunch of parts as many as i could i just finished bumpers yesterday uh, here's an empty board here's a new layout that i came up with and uh, yeah let's put things together we're gonna start we have first of all we have settings we could change the angle of the table if we wanted to this is sort of the standard so we're gonna leave it as is then we got our little flippers so let's put it down here and now we also have editing options as i'm gonna take this one either you go to edit menu and then we have flip or even here there's this uh, flip uh, function that appears there's also rotate we'll get to that in a moment but yeah so we can take this one down we also need so let's put a gate here so that first of all we need a plunger let's put a plunger down here somewhere uh, boop, boop, boop. maybe just like this we need the ball to start somewhere down here let's see if this all we can just go into test mode immediately try it out yeah so far so good and um, next we want to prevent the ball from accidentally going back so we're gonna put this gate up there so we get the gate we're gonna rotate it around 45 degrees place it something like this let's go into test mode yeah this perfectly closes nicely so look when the ball goes through it's not gonna be able to go back down i mean that channel is there anyway to prevent it but yeah now next thing uh, we added a spinning target so this spinner goes up here whenever we uh, are able to send the ball go through in let's just put a ball here let's cheat a little bit and yeah so it's gonna go across the spinner pretty cool we got that one going on for us and then finally let's put this here um, we're gonna add in some bumpers bumpers are super fun let's do it here something along these lines we can test it out and then we'll see oh yeah uh, that was not pretty good we did barely did anything so let's see what's happening underneath the surface we can go into a little 3d uh, view especially in debug physics mode this will then show us exactly how things are looking like here's our little ball going past the bumpers and let's go let's try in slow motion see it goes down but it doesn't go quick enough for it to be able to actually bounce the ball so now what we can do is we can select things so imagine we're here we can go to settings and now we can actually change the speed of things so let's i think kickers something around uh 30 30 centimeters 
per second. Oh yeah, let's disable slow-mo. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. So we can just, you know, very quickly try test things out and make sure that they uh, work nicely. Something like that. Oh yeah, let's take a look back in our 3D view. So what's happening now? So yeah, look, slow motion. Ball is going down and then as soon as the sensor on the floor is hit, it triggers the ring to come down and bounce the ball around. Super cool. You learn a lot when you're trying to physically simulate stuff. Uh, I didn't know that's how bumpers work. It's super cool to see it and then just simulate it in like of course a normal person would simulate it by just on collision you would just simulate a perpendicular force in 2D but uh, why not do it like this when it's so much more fun. One more thing we can add we can put this ball here down here and we can say that this is a captive ball now so whenever we lose the main ball, this captive ball is not going to count towards uh, a live ball. Uh, so it's usually just here, there would be a scoring thing. At the, oh yeah, by the way, we can change the scores. This one scored 10. Uh, let's say that this would score 10 points as well. But yeah, right now I didn't have time to implement targets yet. So there would be a target there that would give you a lot of points if you manage to get things over there. So here's our complete play field for now. Let's go into play mode. We have three balls per play. Didn't have time to make a more fancy display or anything, but yeah. So here it works. Let's go down the spinner. We got four revolutions. Oh yeah, the ball can sometimes, because it is a 3D play field, right? The ball can sometimes actually bounce so hard that it actually goes off walls. Let's get some more points down on those bumpers. Yeah, look at that. Super good. So one thing about these flippers, yeah, I, I really want to, if I get the chance to simulate them as a soft body, to simulate the rubbers. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Score go up. I'm so happy. Anytime you hit a ramp so fast that it goes all the way around, it just feels so satisfying. But yeah, right now you don't really have the precision to be able to make these shots uh, oh, that was beautiful. It's just not super uh, consistent to be able to, to make those, uh, which a real pinball game you would be able to have much more control. Oh, look at this ball three. We're going to go over 4,000. Can we? Oh, no, we cannot make 5,000. Well, there it is. That's the game over. I will be making builds of this for all of the patrons and uh, Kickstarter backers with alpha access. So yeah, be on the lookout for this. And then in the future, I will be making so that you can finally actually draw your own. All of these parts that you see here, you'll be able to draw them on your own and especially the play field. So you can create any kind of pinball table that you want. It's going to be super cool. Now, I didn't manage to get just all of the parts. I got most of the stuff done, but what is missing is the kickers. I'm really sad that this didn't make it in. Uh, and a lot of this kind of, all of these different targets that would give you even more points, maybe light up some lights and stuff like that. So what I will do is I will just add all of these little small, tiny additions as I'm working next month on the actual missions that are gonna tell you hey draw this draw that and so i'm just gonna do it ad hoc whenever i need to and yeah but that's gonna be it for this vlog thank you so much for coming by and i'll see you in the next one